Michael Valentine Valdun Icon, February 3, 1927 July 1, 2015, was an Irish singer of traditional pop, easy listening, and swing music, who found great popular success as an entertainer in the UK and elsewhere, and was noted for his warm and relaxed approach. A crooner, Dune Icon had five successive top ten albums in the UK albums chart in the 1960s, as well as several hits on the UK singles chart including Walk Tall and Elusive Butterfly. From 1965 to 1986 he was a regular fixture on the BBC television schedule with the Val Dune Icon show, which featured his own singing performances and a variety of guest artists. The TV shows were produced by Yvonne Littlewood. Dune Icon was born in Waterford, Ireland, the youngest of the eight children of Agnes, Ney Cavanaugh, and John Dune Icon. In 1941 when he was a teenager his father died, so he had to leave De La Salle College, Waterford, to get factory jobs fabricating steel and making orange and grapefruit boxes. In the early days, legendary Dublin music magnate Sean Smith toured with Val around Ireland. Smith was a major player in the show band scene and was managing the Clipper Carltons at the time. Singing Career Dune Icon was from a musical family and began to perform in his hometown and in a summer season at Coor Town Harbour, County Wexford. He soon featured on Irish radio and appeared in Waterford's first ever television broadcast. Then he played the drums in a band on a tour through Ireland. In 1951 he moved to England to join the Four Ramblers, who toured and performed on BBC radio shows broadcast from factories. Dune Icon met dancer Lynette Ray, his first love, when both she and the Ramblers supported Anthony Nulli on tour. Nulli introduced them, and the couple married in the early 1960s and had two daughters, Sarah and Fiona, and two grandchildren, Bethany and Scott. Dune Icon sang with the group The Four Ramblers and appeared regularly on BBC Radio including the Riders of the Range serials. Recognizing his talent, Nulli persuaded him to leave the singing group and go solo. Soon after his solo career started, he had his own radio show as well as performing in concerts and cabaret. In 1963 he was booked to appear on Sunday night at the Palladium. As a result of this performance, Bill Cotton, then assistant head of Light Entertainment, offered him his own show on BBC television, which lasted for over 20 years and at its peak attracted audiences of some 19 million viewers. The shows featured his relaxed crooner style, sitting in a rocking chair wearing cardigans or jumpers, sometimes performing comic Irish songs including Paddy McGinty's Goat, Delaney's Donkey, and O'Rafferty's Motor Car as well as easy listening and country material, on which he accompanied himself on acoustic guitar. Dunican's songs about O'Rafferty were popular enough for the BBC to publish a book, Val Dune Icon Tells the Adventures of O'Rafferty, which retold five of the tales, in 1969. He was sometimes compared to American singer Perry Como, though he claimed his main influence was Bing Crosby. As it was a variety show, it gave a number of other performers early exposure, such as Dave Allen. On December 31, 1976, Dune Icon performed his hit song What Would I Be on BBC One's A Jubilee of Music, celebrating British pop music for Queen Elizabeth II's impending Silver Jubilee. The Palladium performance also kick-started his recording career. Between 1964 and 1973 Dune Icon was rarely out of the UK singles chart, his greatest successes including the singles Walk Tall, The Special Years, Elusive Butterfly, What Would I Be, On Decca, If the Whole World Stopped Loving, Pie, and Morning, Phillips, and the album's 13 Lucky Shades of Val Dune Icon, Decca, and Val Dune Icon Rocks, But Gently, Pie, which reached number one in the UK album's chart in 1967. The 1966 single release Elusive Butterfly reached a UK chart peak of number 5 and number 3 in Ireland. His 1967 album Val Dune Icon Rocks, but gently knocked the Beatles' SGT Pepper off the top of the album's chart. A long-standing friend of the singer Sandy Denny, in 1970 Dune Icon was present at the recording of the Led Zeppelin track The Battle of Evermore, contributing to the song's Gaelic-influenced backing harmonies. 
After a spell with Philips Records in the 70s he also recorded for RCA. He also sang the theme song to the film Ring of Bright Water. In the United States, the Val Dune Icon show aired on ABC during Saturday nights at 8.30 p.m. 7.30 p.m. Central, from June 5 to August 14, 1971. Regulars included Bernard Cribbins, Bob Todd, the Norman Main Dancers, the Mike Sam Singers, and the Kenny Woodman Orchestra. Both American and British acts appeared on the show. He was the subject of This Is Your Life in 1970. Eamon Andrews met him at the 18th Green of the South Hearts Golf Club as Dune Icon played a round of golf. Later Life and Death Dune Icon lived at Naughty Green in Beaconsfield, Buckinghamshire. He stopped performing in 2009, and enjoyed spending his free time in Spain, where he had a second home. He was a keen golfer and a talented watercolor painter. Another hobby he enjoyed was cooking. In June 2011, Dune Icon was recognized by the mayor of Waterford, bestowing on him the freedom of the city. Dune Icon died at a nursing home in Buckinghamshire on the evening of July 1, 2015, aged 88. He had not been ill. His daughter Sarah told The Guardian, until 87, he was as fit as a flea. It was just old age, I'm afraid the batteries ran out. Leading tributes to Dune Icon, fellow entertainer Bruce Forsyth said, it is very sad. He was always a lovely man to work with. He was a very warm person, and number one in his field. He brought a lovely warmth with his personality and was a very popular man. Elaine Page commented on Twitter, sad to hear of Val Dunican's passing. Rip Val, while BBC disc jockey Tony Blackburn said so sad to hear that Val Dune Icon has passed away. He was a lovely man and a true professional who I worked with on several TV shows R.I.P.